This is Pastor Tony Kemp, and I'm glad that you decided to join me for Good News Today, where I share the kindness and the goodness of God through the revelation of His Son, Jesus. This is part two of a message entitled, The Gospel of Jesus. And I want to do a quick review for those of you who may have missed uh, part one on this message. The word gospel means glad tidings or good news, which is why we have named this program Good News Today. But let me do a brief review of part one. And this teaching is for everyone. Maybe you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. I want to present the good news of God to you. Maybe you've already made a decision to follow Jesus and uh, you just want some further teaching in the revelation of God's word, or perhaps you have been saved by Jesus, you've been delivered from the evil one, you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, you have a call of God into ministry, and you want to learn some more about the ways of Jesus, and you want to be a good minister of Jesus Christ. And so what I'm sharing with you is a study out of the book of Romans that the Apostle Paul wrote, where he addressed the church in Rome, Italy. And so he starts it out in chapter one, verse one, where he calls himself a servant of Jesus Christ, that he is dedicated to living and preaching the good news of God, which God promised. He talks about the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who was declared to be the son of God by the spirit of holiness because Christ died on the cross for your sins, he was buried, and three days later, he physically came back to life and he proved himself with many infallible proofs as being alive. That he ascended into heaven. He appeared to his disciples. He ascended into heaven. Jesus is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. And God so loves you that he gave his son Jesus to die for you on the cross. Jesus took your sins upon himself. All you have to do is say, Jesus, I give you my sins. Forgive me. Jesus interceded to God Almighty to ask God Almighty to forgive you of all your sins. Every sin that you've ever committed in thinking, talking, or doing, Jesus said, God Almighty, Father, forgive them. And so Jesus is your intercessor because he was received by God Almighty because he never sinned. And Jesus is the way into heaven. Jesus said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. Jesus said, I'm the door. If you enter in through me, you can be saved. Your sins can be forgiven. You can become a child of God. You can receive eternal life. God so loved you that he gave his son Jesus for you, that if you would believe in Jesus, you would not perish and go to the lake of fire, but you would receive eternal life. All you have to do is become a follower of Jesus. And this is the simple beginning of the gospel. And Paul said, I, I God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit in the good news of his son Jesus. And Paul was saying in verse 11, chapter one of the book of Romans, this letter to the Roman church in Italy, uh, uh, believers in Jesus. He says, I long to see you that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to the end that you may be established, okay, that you may be grounded in your relationship with Jesus and God the Father. So in verse 15, he says, as much as in me is, I'm ready to preach the gospel, the good news to those of you that are in Rome. For he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. Now this word salvation it means salvation from sins. It can mean being healed of sicknesses and diseases. It can mean being delivered from demon powers. It can mean uh, that when God looks at you, he looks at you with love and mercy and grace because all of your sins are forgiven by Jesus and he doesn't bring you into any sort of negative judgment or condemnation. In other words, uh, when God looks at you, he, he sees all your sins put on Jesus and he sees all the righteousness and the holiness uh, uh, of Jesus in your lives. Because when Jesus died on the cross, he took all your sins upon himself and in exchange, he gave you his right standing with God. And the father was pleased with this. So when the father looked at Jesus, when Jesus was on the cross, he saw all of your sin on Jesus. And Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Three days later, he comes back to life. And now Jesus is in heaven. And when the Father looks at you, when you say, Jesus, I'm yours, forgive me, be my Lord and Savior, all your sins are put on Jesus. And then the right standing of Jesus, where Jesus was perfect and holy and righteous and, and all of that, that is um, 
when God the Father looks at you, uh, he sees Jesus' life over you, that it was perfect. And, and because you're now in Jesus, uh, the Father doesn't see your sin. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any person is in Christ, he's a new creation. Since you're in Christ, since you're inside of Christ, when the Father looks at you, he sees the righteousness of his son Jesus, the holiness of his son Jesus, the perfection of his son Jesus, the obedience of his son Jesus, because you're inside Christ, Christ is over you, so you're accepted by God. All your sins are washed away. You're a child of God by virtue of your faith in Jesus. This is the good news. You can never be good enough to get into heaven, no matter how hard you try. Uh, God the Father knew that. That's why he sent Jesus to die for you and he was resurrected. This is the good news. So the power of God is when you receive the good news of Jesus Christ and you obey the good news of Jesus Christ. You follow Jesus. You develop a relationship with Jesus. You obey Jesus. And I've said it before, I'll continue to say it again and again and again. So Apostle Paul said, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And that's in uh, the 16th chapter, verses 24 through 27. Um, he says, now to him there's a power to establish you according to my gospel. You can be grounded and established, unmovable. You can be a fully convinced, fully persuaded, fully committed to Jesus Christ, the, the gospel, the good news has the power to cause you to stand firm, to stand strong in your faith with Jesus, okay? And uh, so he, he, uh, Paul says that, and then um, Paul begins to teach the believers uh, how to love God and how to love each other. And so I will start with this because the gospel, uh, the good news of Jesus Christ in the book of Romans, uh, this particular book is divided into four sections, okay? Chapters one through four has a movement, okay? A message and a movement. Chapters five through 11 has a message and a movement. Chapters nine through 11 has a message and a movement. So all the message and all the movement of Jesus Christ. And chapters 12 through 16 have its own message and movement, okay? So in chapters 1 through 4, the gospel or the good news reveals the righteousness of God through, G th through Jesus Christ, okay? But how God is righteous and God is holy, and we'll go over this much more detail. And remember, uh, Jesus is God Almighty, and, and, and uh, you, have, you have God the Father, you have Jesus, and you have the Holy Spirit. There are three who bear witness in heaven, the Father, the Word, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and these three are one. So you have God the Father who's a person, Jesus who's a person, the Holy Spirit is a person. Each one is God, uh, co-equal, co-existent, co-eternal, and yet they're one. How they can be three and how they can be one is a mystery. But he's God Almighty, who is, who was, who is to come, all right? And Jesus is God Almighty. He is, he was, he is to come, all right? So uh, in chapters five through eight, the good news produces new creations in Jesus Christ. In other words, when you turn from sin and against sin and believe in Jesus, you become a new creation. You become a brand new person filled with the life of God. That's through the Holy Spirit. And so that's in chapters five through eight. In chapters uh, 9 through 11, the good news of the gospel shows you how God is going to fulfill whatever promises he made to the nation of Israel. And in chapters 12 through 16, the gospel brings the unity of the faith and the unity of the Holy Spirit into the church through the truth that's found in the revelation of Jesus. So now let's get started because I want you to understand. I want you to understand uh, this good news of Jesus. So in chapter one, the first thing that Paul teaches is how every person that's ever been born is sinful. He, he teaches the sinful of man, the sinfulness of man and the righteousness of God. And, and what you see in chapter one of his book is that you see man under the judgment of God, the man who has yet to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. He's outside of the salvation of Jesus, okay? And so the apostle points out in chapter 1, verse 22, the pride of man. 
And he says, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And so it's the sin of pride, okay? And so you gotta humble yourself in order to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, okay? In verses 24 through 28, the Apostle Paul talks about different kinds of sins that God uh, hates. Now remember, God will hate the sin, but he loves the sinner, okay? He will hate the sin, but God loves the sinner. Jesus hates the sin, but he loves the sinner, okay? So the Apostle Paul talks about how God is righteous and holy, and he hates sin. This is what it says in chapter 1, verses 24 through 28, that God hates the sin of homosexuality, lesbianism. In verse 29, the Apostle Paul says through the Holy Spirit that that man has separated himself from a relationship with God, and because of that separation of sinful man uh, from God, man finds himself filled with, the scripture says, all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, full of envy and murder, debate, just being disagreeable, backbiters, haters of God, despised, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. And he says, these individuals know the judgment of God, but in spite of the fact that they know that God is in disagreement with their behavior, they still continue to act or behave sinfully. And that's is in verses 29 to 32. So now in the second chapter of the book of Acts, remember, the first chapter of the book of Acts shows you the sinfulness of all men, okay? outside of having a relationship with Jesus. Chapter two in the book of Romans, the apostle Paul outlines religious individuals, okay, who think that they're better than godless individuals, and he reveals they're still sinful because they don't have a relationship with Jesus, and they have not submitted themselves to the righteousness of God. And so according to the Holy Spirit, as Paul speaks, to submit oneself to Jesus is to surrender to the righteousness of God. So you can be religious and you can try to do everything right, but you're gonna fail because of the sinfulness of your nature. And you're not gonna be acceptable with God trying to be good enough. No, the Apostle Paul says through the Holy Spirit, the good news is if you submit to Jesus, believe in Jesus, follow Jesus, you're submitting to the righteousness of God, okay? Okay, so now in chapter three, the Apostle Paul um, says that he concludes that both the godless and the religious are all guilty before God if they have not surrendered themselves to Jesus, okay? Now, in verse nine, the Apostle Paul says, we have proved both Jews and Gentiles, they're all under sin. In verse 10, the Apostle Paul says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that understands. There is none that seeks after God. They're all gone out of the way. They are become unprofitable. There is none good, no, not one. And so he's saying, in the sinfulness of man, chapter one, and even with people who are trying to be religious, they're trying to please God and trying to be right with God on their own without, without accepting Jesus as Lord and Savior, without receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. He says they're not gonna be good enough. The scripture concludes all are under sin, okay? So no one does is good enough, okay? In verse 17, he says the way of peace they've not known. Why? Because Jesus is the way of peace. In verse 18, he says, there is no reverence of God before their eyes, okay? Because everybody sins without Jesus Christ, okay? And without Jesus Christ, you cannot enter into heaven. That's what he's saying, okay? In verse 19, it says, now we know that whatsoever things the law says, that's the law of Moses given through the revelation of God to Moses, it says to them that are under the law that every mouth may be stopped and all the world may become guilty before God. In other words, God is righteous, he's high and he's holy, and everybody has sinned, whether you're religious or not, and you're guilty before God. And no matter what you think, say, or do, 
and you'll never be righteous and holy enough to be acceptable to God. The only person that's done that is God's son, Jesus Christ. That's what the Apostle Paul is saying. The Apostle Paul goes on to say in verse 23, okay, for all have sinned, this is in chapter 3, and fallen short of the glory of God. And now he begins to talk about the righteousness of God witnessed by the law and the prophets, the righteousness of God which is revealed by the faith of Jesus Christ. For he says, those who surrender to Jesus are justified freely by the grace of God that's found in Jesus. Now in chapter 4, the apostle, according to his good news, says this, the person who is having faith in Jesus is righteous before God. In verse 5, Paul says, to him that does not work, in other words, you don't try to be good enough to be acceptable to God. You know you can't do it. You'll ultimately fail. But you believe on Jesus. God justifies that man, and that man's faith is counted as righteousness. In other words, you can never be good enough to be acceptable to God. Jesus was good enough by his perfect life of obedience to the Father, his death on the cross, his resurrection from among the dead, and his ascension to the right hand of God. Okay? And so in chapter 5, verse 1, the Apostle Paul says, Therefore, being justified by faith, just as if you've never sinned, you have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, you stand before God just as if you've never sinned because your faith is in Jesus. And this is the good news. So Paul goes on to say in verse 19, For by the original man's name was Adam, Adam and Eve. He says, by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of the one, referring to Jesus, many shall be made righteous. The only way that you are made righteous with God is by surrendering your life to Jesus Christ. This is the good news. This is the good news, okay? It's, 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 it's amazing news, actually. Um, the Apostle Paul teaches that the revelation that God gave Moses, what's called the law, the Torah, entered that sin might abound. In other words, God said, don't do this, do this. And as soon as he said it, you know, because of our rebellious nature, we did the very thing God said, don't do. Okay? And it showed our sinfulness. Okay? But Jesus can deliver you from sinfulness. That's what he's saying. So the law was given that sin might abound, and where sin abounded, grace didn't much more abound. In other words, the more you sinned, the more God gave his grace to save you from sin. And that grace is released by the power of Jesus Christ, this good news that you're receiving. Okay? So he said, as sin reigned on to spiritual death, physical death and spiritual death, even so grace, the grace of God given through Jesus, reigns through righteousness to eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. In other words, because of sin, men physically die, but they spiritually die and they go to the lake of fire. But when you turn from sin and to Jesus, all your sins are forgiven. And though you physically die, you have eternal life and you go to be with God Almighty in heaven forever because you're a child of God by virtue of your faith in Jesus. That's what he's saying. In chapter six, the apostle Paul teaches that once you receive Jesus, watch this, you now live in Christ himself. You are to identify yourself one hundred percent with Jesus. That's why the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. You become something you never were before. All things are dead and passed away. All things become new. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, that's the word of God. So you are to identify yourself 100% with Jesus. In other words, in other words, just like Jesus was crucified on the cross, because you see yourself in Jesus, and because the Bible says you're in Jesus now, if any man be in Christ, that's what the scripture says, you were crucified with Christ. You're to 100% identify with Jesus. Just like Jesus was buried, okay, just like Jesus died, you died with Christ. You were buried with Christ. Just like Jesus, three days later, was raised from the dead, in your human spirit, you've been raised from the dead. You've received the very life of God himself. Just like Jesus ascended into heaven and is now seated at the right hand of God the Father, in your human spirit, because you have believed on Jesus, 
you're seated with God Almighty at the right hand of God Almighty because Jesus is there and you're in Jesus and Jesus is in you. So in other words, you identify 100% with Jesus. Jesus lived a righteous life and because you've turned from sin and against it and believed into Jesus, the righteous life that Jesus lived, that the Father loved, now you're in Jesus. The Father doesn't see your sin. He sees the righteousness of Jesus. And so you're the righteousness of God now because you're in Jesus. Okay? You're in Jesus. Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Jesus was crucified. You're in Jesus now. So it's like you were crucified. Jesus died. You're in Jesus now. It's like your old life died. Jesus was buried. Your old life has been buried. Jesus was raised from the dead to a, a new life. You've been raised from the dead by the Spirit of God to walk in a new life. Jesus ascended into heaven, is now seated at the right hand of God the Father. In Jesus, you have ascended into heaven. You have eternal life in your human spirit. When you die and you leave your body, you'll go and you'll be with God Almighty. Because you're in Jesus, you identify 100% with Jesus, okay? So I'll say it like this. You're crucified with Christ. You died with Christ. You were buried with Christ. You were raised back to life with Christ. Your old man is dead. The sinful self has perished. And now you're risen with Christ to live a holy and a righteous life because of the gospel, because of Jesus, because of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit within you. So in chapter six, the apostle Paul says, now because the spirit of Jesus lives in you, stop sinning. You now have the power to stop sinning because your old sinful self has died and now you are alive with the life of God because you believe in Jesus and you have a relationship with Jesus. You have obeyed the gospel of Jesus. Now this is so good. In chapter six, Paul says, do you not know that when you were baptized into Jesus Christ, you were baptized into his death? And let me say this to you. So, so what you do is this, it's very simple. Say, dear Jesus, come into my life. Dear Jesus, I know you're the son of God. Dear Jesus, I know you died on the cross for my sins. Dear Jesus, I know you were buried. Dear Jesus, I know you came back to life. Dear Jesus, you're hearing me right now. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Come into my life, Jesus. I'm yours. Be my Lord and Savior. I'm going to serve you, Jesus. I'm going to love you, Jesus. The minute you say that, you're now in Jesus Christ according to the Holy Scriptures. Okay? You're now forgiven according to the Holy Scriptures. And now you're supposed to be baptized in water. And the Apostle Paul said this, basically referring to baptism in water and baptism into Jesus Christ. He says in verse 3, chapter 6, do you not know that when you were baptized into Jesus Christ, you were baptized into his death? Why? Because water baptism represents you had a sinful life, you got baptized in water, that means you were crucified with Christ, you died with Christ, you buried with Christ, when you come up out of the water, just like Jesus in his resurrection from among the dead was raised to a new life, you're raised to living a brand new life in Jesus Christ. Okay? So that's why Paul says, do you not know when you were baptized into Jesus Christ, you were baptized into his death, you're buried with Jesus by baptism, and that death, so just like Jesus, was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, he says, you also should walk in newness of life. For this is what the Apostle Paul says. He says, for if you've been planted together in the likeness of Jesus' death, you shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection, knowing this, that your old man is crucified with Jesus, that the authority of sin would be destroyed in your body so that from now on you do not have to serve sin. For you're dead, and you're freed from sin. Now you're dead with Christ, and as you uh, believe, you live with Christ, okay? So in verse 10, Paul says, for in that Jesus died, he died to sin once, but in that Jesus lives, he lives to God. Verse 11, Paul says, reckon yourself to be dead to sin and alive to God 
through Jesus Christ. In verse 12, he says, do not let sin rule in your body. You do not have to obey its desires. In verse 14, the apostle Paul says, for because you're in Jesus now, sin shall no longer have dominion over you because you're under the grace of Jesus Christ. In verse 22, Paul says, now you have been made free from sin. Now you've become servants of God. Now you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Let me share this with you. Before I met Jesus, um, you know, I, um, you know, it was nothing for me to, to drink too much and get drunk. It was, you know, smoke cigarettes, okay, steal from others, be violent toward others, okay? Um, curse like a sailor, okay? And so when, when Jesus came into my life, all of that changed, okay? That old sinful self died and passed away, okay? And so um, my life changed when I gave it to Jesus Christ. The things that I loved, I hated. The things I used to desire, I desired them no longer, okay? Because to be honest with you, back in that day when uh, I was living in sin, to be honest with you, I mean, we would, we would steal from somebody just for fun. But Jesus took that away. And so now I don't engage in those behaviors anymore because of the grace of Jesus Christ. And what I want to say to you is this. When Jesus comes into your life, he gives you a supernatural peace. He gives you a supernatural rest. He does something inside of your heart and life. You forgive yourself. You forgive others. All of a sudden you have a peace that just is beyond understanding. And so I want to urge you to believe the good news concerning Jesus. Receive the peace of God into your life. Receive the presence of God into your life. And let Jesus heal your mind, your heart, your soul. And let Jesus even heal your body. Okay? It's time for you to have a brand new life. And Jesus can give you a brand new life. Aren't you ready for something new? Jesus says in his word, in the book of Isaiah, he says, look, I'm doing a new thing. Chapter 43, Nat will spring forth. Receive the goodness of God right now. Say yes to Jesus. Amen. May the Lord bless you.